keeping your hands warm is essential. That's uh, your connection to the bike, how you control everything. I can't even walk on it. Hey guys, welcome back. We are in beautiful Brevard, North Carolina today. It is a cold January day and I'm here actually because I'm working on Adventure, which is a startup that I'll tell you about in a bit that I'm working on. You kind of have to know that it's Uber for mountain biking guides. There will be a video on that, but in the meantime, if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about it, you can go to adbture.com, that's adventurer.com, and uh, sign up for the waiting list, invite only for now. And there's also a link in the description. So what I really want to talk to you about today is prepping for cold weather rides. So we have all this stuff and uh, there's two components to this. What you have to wear and what you have to carry. So let's dig into it. So one of the most important parts of actually enjoying an outdoor ride when it's 21 degrees outside, which it is now, is layering up properly. So I like to start with a good base layer. This is what kind of hugs your body warmth and keeps it in there. So I use these ones called hot chilies. There's a bunch of good brands. These just have worked for me. And then good socks. These are wool socks. It's important to use wool much better than cotton and managing all kinds of temperatures. So if it's hot or it's cold, these still work. And uh, this particular set I got from Target. No idea the brand, they work perfectly. Your chamois, I'm not gonna tell you if you have to wear it under or over the base layer, do whatever you want. There's so much discussion on the subject that no matter what I say, I'm basically gonna get it wrong for half of the internet. And then obviously, yeah, your last two things. I like to ride with a long sleeve shirt and uh, shorts. Some people prefer to wear pants in this kind of weather. For me, pants are just uncomfortable, but you know, to each his own. Then there's two extra things when I mention layers is that I carry two jackets. This one, which is nice and warm and kind of provides extra warmth if I need it. And this one, which is a lighter layer, but it serves better as a windbreaker and uh, for rain protection because you do not want to get wet when it's this cold. And I carry these two in my pack. So there's a ton of space here. And uh, this is a 16 liter pack, so it's obviously huge. But in the winter, I think it's worth it. Now, let's look what I carry in here. Oh, and I almost forgot. I leave in my car. I don't carry it on the ride with me. Just a small little towel to dry off once you get there. And a super puffy jacket. And uh, this one really does provide a ton of warmth because this setup works basically because you're generating your own body heat while you're riding. So once you're doing absolutely nothing, then the cold is going to start to set in. So on to what I have in my backpack. Now I carry two pairs of gloves on all cold weather rides. I have these hand up gloves which are cold weather by their name, but in reality what that means is that it's great for that 30 to 40 degree weather range. Phenomenal, not weatherproof. And then I carry these 100% gloves which you can tell they're much longer, much thicker, bulkier. They're pretty comfortable but they feel very different and they have a very long cuff at the end so that your whole hand is protected. And these are waterproof and that is key. It's much better to be in 30 degree weather and be nice and dry or even 20 degree weather than when it's 40 and drizzly and that's really hard. So definitely get these kinds of gloves which are waterproof. Keeping your hands warm is essential. That's uh, your connection to the bike, how you control everything. Again, I'm not sponsored by these guys at all, but absolutely love them, so highly recommend them. And I'm obviously not gonna go into tools and stuff like that, because I assume that you already carry them on whatever kind of ride, but make sure you have the basics here to repair your bike if anything goes wrong. You do not want to get stuck out there when it's freezing cold. If it's important in summer, in winter, it's 100 times more important. Additionally, if you want to keep things dry, I carry a little rain cover because you're carrying your jackets and your stuff like that in there, so you don't want things to get wet. I think it's really important to carry a med kit. This is a very basic med kit, so it has stuff like bandages and a medication bite and blister stuff, antiseptic and things to keep you doing okay if you have a minor fall that isn't too serious and you just need to kind of patch up to get off the trail. This one is made by Adventure Adventure Medical Kits and they sell them all over the place. And the last thing that I like to carry, which is super important, is an emergency blanket. These are also sometimes called space blankets. They're smaller than the tube, which unfolds into a huge blanket with reflex body heat so you can wrap yourself in it in case of an emergency. This is not something that you're gonna use unless you really, really, really need it. So for things like if somebody has a crash and you wanna avoid them going into shock and you wanna keep them warm, you can wrap them up in this or if you have some kind of issue where everything you're wearing is not enough or you need help or anything, it's really important to have this. So this is one of these things that you will 
never use, hopefully, but if you ever need to use it once, it's gonna be a lifesaver and it really doesn't take up much space. The last thing I wanna comment on is my bladder. If you can see, I have an insulating liner on the tube and uh, this is so that I can keep the water actually drinkable. One of the big issues that I've struggled with in the past, particularly when skiing, not so much when mountain biking, is that the water will freeze in the tube and then I don't have access to any water. You may not think so, but you can get severely dehydrated in the cold. Another thing that you can do, which is a little bit annoying because you'll get some slosh in the water on your camelback, is every time you're done drinking, push air back into the line. Because as long as the water is in the bladder, it, it's most likely not gonna freeze but if it's in the tube, it's really exposed. So now that we've gone through the whole setup, I'm gonna go get ready and we're gonna go hit the trails. Okay, so I am already all layered up. Let's see, base layer, the jersey, and then my legs, I have the base layer and the socks under there. I actually like to wear my knee pads because they give me warmth to my knees, so double benefit. Now, it should be pretty obvious, but set up your bike as close as you can do it while you're in nice warm weather. Once you get to the trailhead, you don't wanna waste time and get cold before you actually start riding. The only exception is tire pressures. So pump them up too much so that you get to the trailhead and then you can let air out once you're there. Woo, so we are at the trailhead and it is a little bit chilly here. So by the time you get going, you just wanna be a tiny bit cold. If you're warm, like nice and toasty, as soon as you start riding, you're gonna burn up and you really don't want that because sweat, making you wet, that's gonna make you colder, which is how you get into this horrible ride spiral. So the way I do it is I'm just wearing the thin layer. This is not very warm. It's just like a windbreaker kind of thing. And then I wear my full face to cover my ears. You know, in summer, you can kind of just ride through there. Yeah, get a little bit wet, whatever, no big deal. Here, I have no idea of the specific number, but it's very cold. So you do not want to get your feet in there. So the reason that you wanna keep your tire pressure measurement for the end is because the ambient temperature temperature has a huge effect on air expansion so that means that it changes the pressure and the volume inside of your tire significantly so when I left I had put 27 oh, sorry about that got winded I put 27 psi in the front and by the time I made it to the trail is around 23. So I usually ride with 22 in the front. You can imagine that if I had set it to 22, by the time I made it out here, it probably would have been in the high teens. Instant rim damage. And it's obvious that the same thing can be said for suspension. The pressure in there obviously changes. You know, that being said, I think that the effect is not as significant, so kind of ignore it. Now, I have particularly sensitive eyes. You see, I had laser eye surgery just a while ago. So I prefer to ride up and do the traverses and short descents with my glasses, but I descend the long stretches and goggles. If you have sensitive eyes, consider doing this as well. The cold wind really dries out your eyes super quickly. For me, unfortunately, climbing with the goggles is way too hot. So I end up carrying glasses and goggles. And yeah, it's not the most comfortable thing ever. If you never struggle with this kind of stuff, just glasses should be okay. Plus, we all know that goggles make you faster. You have to wear them. If not, you're basically not even a mountain biker. I kid, it's a joey thing to say that. So it's been a good, I would say, half hour pedaling. By now, just with this layer, I'm nice and toasty. That's why you have to start just a tiny bit cold so that as you exercise, the heat of your own body gets you to the temperature that you want. Now, as you start to go down, the rules change a little bit with how you have to feel at the top of the mountain. You should be just a tad warm in comparison. I actually keep the same clothes despite the fact that when I get up there, I'm feeling a little bit toasty. Just because as you start to get down, since you're really not expending as much energy, uh, it starts to get really cold really fast. All that wind hitting you, the wind chill is a significant thing. You know, as soon as that wind starts to hit you, it feels like if the temperature were much cooler than it actually is. So today we didn't have to deal with snow. Wait, let's take a pause here and take a quick trip to Boulder, Colorado. If you do have to deal with snow, it's not the end of the world. It definitely has less traction and does warrant caution, but it's not as bad as you'd think it is. Ice is the true enemy. Once you get the feel of snow, it's rideable so long as it's not too deep. 
Once it gets to be too much, you need a fat bike to be able to ride it. Two and a half inch tires and below just sink in if it's too much snow. Whoa. As soon as that deep snow gets you, all the speed is gone. And if it's powder snow, forget about it. Not even a fat bike can be pedaled in that. Anyway, let's get back to North Carolina. Another thing to know when it's this cold is freeze thaw cycles. And that is not for you, but for the trail. See the trail freezes the water that's in the dirt and uh, gets really, really hard. And then when everything thaws, it gets the trail all wet and it gets really slushy. That is a point in time where you can really damage the trail if you ride under those conditions. So you should try to avoid being out there. The trail is damp. If you do get to ride rock slabs like this, for example, nothing really changes in normal situations. There's tons and tons of grip. But if you encounter a rock slab with water on it, that ice is killer. I'm gonna do my best to get up this. Okay, as you can see, I can't even walk on it. So obviously since we're going up, it doesn't really matter. But think about if you're going down, you find that ice patch, serious trouble. So, you know, be aware of your surroundings. If there's an area that you know the water crosses over, when it's uh, below freezing temperature, pay attention. So if you see these, they look like ice hairs or something like that. All they are is little pieces of ice that grow out of the ground. Water gets in to the ground and as it freezes, it expands. And then when it expands, the only way it can go is up. But once it thaws, it's gonna be prone to damage when it's wet. And just to clarify, you can ride over them without a problem. You're not gonna damage the trail by doing that. It's once everything melts at the risk of damage. A final word of caution is to slow down just a tiny bit. Even if you know a trail well, you'll want to be able to evaluate conditions ahead with enough time to course correct if you find any. Definitely toning down my speed, just cause I don't know where it's icy. Oh, I see. I see here. As you can see, the majority of that trail was in perfect condition, but some spots were unexpectedly frozen solid. So I think at this point I've kind of told you everything there is to know. Oh, wrong line there. Everything that there is to know about cold weather riding. If you have any questions or anything, make sure to shoot them in the comments and uh, I will do my best to answer stuff. I know that this is a video that is more geared towards beginner riders. So if you've been following for a long time, and you thought that this was a little bit too basic, sorry about that. Uh, hope it was still entertaining for what it's worth. Then again, maybe you're like me and uh, you've been riding for a ton of time in warm places like Florida and only every once in a while do you make it out to locations like North Carolina. So as I was saying at the beginning of the video, the real reason I'm here in Brevard is because I'm working on adventure and you can see the little logo there on my bars. And that's a startup that I'm working on, which in just a few words is a Uber for mountain biking guides, among other things, right? So it's not only gonna be for mountain biking, I'm just starting there. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, or you wanna be on the wait list because it's invite only right now, and it should be opening pretty soon, uh, go to adventurer.com, I'll place a link in the description anyways and uh, yeah I'll keep you up to date with some emails I hope you had fun with me because this was a absolute blast to record and to talk about this I will see you for the next one and happy riding Woo! that was awesome